that you want to struggle, place it the bar. You, you can you just roll the bar to your hips. You don't need anyone to help you keep the bar or whatever. Um, okay, when you do the exercise with the bar, you want to have an overhand grip, always. And then you do the exercise. This is uh, yeah, proper positioning right there. What I've seen many girls, especially girls, is extending the arms. Now extend the arms. Yes. And they, they go there. <laughs> this is very common. Then you can move more weight there. <laughs> you're, short, you're shortening the move around. So uh, roll the bar. Do one, one rep with no weight. It's better than a woman because this is more uh, prominent. You see those bones? Superior anterior iliac crest, I think in English. So you want to place the band between these two bones and the pubic bone, right there. You don't want to lock the arms and move the bar there. That's the way. That's cheating because you are shortening the range of motion. You can move more weight. But it's not about moving more weight, it's about creating more tension, right? If you use an elastic resistance, same, same place, between the pubic bone and the iliac crest. We have some soft tissue right there, that's the point, okay? You want, you want to put the barbell above the iliac crest. This is sharp, just the organs, the, the belly, right? It's just below the iliac crest and the pubic bone, okay? couple of reps. So we want to apply the same thing. She wants to do this stuff at the end of the motion. She's, contro she's controlling very well the way down. Lock the movement. And you will feel there is an, like an anatomical limitation. So when you lock, there is no more. When you do that, you feel a point where that's it. There is no more range of motion. That's, that's it. It's like you are locking out the movements when you do that. This. On the hips ha happen the same thing. You you get there and then clack, you lock. At that point, you will feel how your glutes get fully shortened. Okay, everything is fine here. Now, descansa. We have bar. You you have seen probably band, yeah. You have seen barbell and band combinations. What's the main difference between the bar and the elastic band? Resistance, resistance, through through the motion. Motion. Huh? Yeah. resistance through the motion. Resistance through the range of motion, right? When were we stronger? When hips are bent or when hips are full extended? Full extended. Stronger. When we are stronger? Yeah. Yeah. No, when you're bent. When you are bent. Yeah. You are stronger. Yeah. You're stronger. I'm not saying that the glutes were harder. Mm -hmm. I said when you are stronger. I mean, this is more complicated. That I'm trying to to make it easy, but there is a lot of things behind. We have three main hip extensor muscles. So when you extend, it's not just the glutes. Hamstrings are involved, and then the addu adductor majors are involved. You have three main hip extensor exercise uh, muscles. So when you do hip thrust or when you do a squat, you are not isolating the glutes. All three hip extensor muscles will work. Now, the proportion at which those muscle groups are involved through the range of motion is not the same. So at the bottom of the squat, percentage-wise, the adductor major work more than the glutes. Okay? The glutes work harder because at that point is the hardest, right? But proportion-wise, the uh, adductor major work harder, more than the glutes. Same here. So, although there is no research yet from a biomechanics and physiology or anatomy point of view, the adductor major should work harder at the bottom, and then at the top, the role changes. So when the hips are fully extended, the amount of force coming from the adductor major decrease, the amount of hip extension coming from the glutes increase. 
Yeah. So the protagonist, the main muscle group involved in hip extension at the end of the range of motion is the glutes. Okay. But when you combine the three muscles, you are able to produce more force at the bottom when hips are bent than at the top when hips are fully extended. This is our strength profile. We are more, we are stronger at the bottom here, right? So at the bottom, like he said, we are stronger. And then at the top, we are weaker. Yeah? Yeah. Now, if I put this one, this guy, does it make sense the resistance profile that this tool will give according to my strength profile? Would it make sense? Yes. Why? Because eventually the tension on the band decreases. At the bottom. At the bottom. But at the bottom but you are stronger. But we are stronger down and we are weaker, weaker up. up top. Right, but there's still tension at a certain point that weakens, correct? Through the range of motion, the tension on the band weakens, correct? At the, at the bottom. At the bottom. But at yeah. the bottom you're supposed to move more weight because you are stronger. Correct. So, in fact, this has a wrong profile. So if I put the band, right, which, well, here it should be, no? Should be underneath the lateral support, that's the way you want to attach it, mm -hmm. underneath, and then you come here. So you put the band at the right position. So right here, at the, at the bottom, go down. Here, you are supposed to have more weight, but the band doesn't provide much of right. attention. And then go to the top. When she is this, when she's weaker, she get all the load coming from the band. So the band is not an efficient tool in terms of effectiveness through the range of motion. Yeah? yeah. The barbell is always superior because although it gets harder at the end, because you are less stronger, and also because the distance and so on is get harder, at the bottom is also hard. Okay. Now that being said, there are two um, movement. I mean, two um, ways when I decide to use the band. One is if I'm training like, like an athlete and he or she required to do the exercise ex explosively. Imagine if I, when you work this explosiveness, you don't go super heavy. You go like a 50, 60%, 40%, 30% of your maximum repetition. If I ask the guy to uh, explode the barbell, the barbell will go like to the roof. And at the end of the movement, when I want to have a challenge, there is no challenge. So then I would use a band. The band set off inertia effect. So if she performs explosively, no matter how fast she performs, she still has to create extension force at the end. So that is one uh, possibility to use properly the band. The second one is I have noticed that girls that tend to feel the quads too much on the, hump, on, the, on the hip thrust, when they use the band, they don't feel the quad as much as when they are using the barbell. Just for beginners, eventually you have to you know, use the, the barbell. And that happens because basically you only get resistance when the muscle is fully contracted and when the glutes are the main guy involved, right? So these are the two uh, moments where I can, I would choose the band instead of the barbell. If I, if I want to perform the exercise explosively, or if someone feels the quad too much, then you can use the band, okay? Now, the last variation, there's a few variations on part. We're gonna combine barbell and band. So, um, percentage-wise, I don't know, because it's difficult to measure how much the distance of the band is being stretched, but normally it would make no sense to make it harder at the top because it's already hard with the bar. 
So, but I find this to be the variation that create more like tension like crazy. And the reason why I believe is because these create like a bracing effect. So if you hit thrust the bar, at the end it's like like nothing. I mean there's weight, but that's it. But if you have the band, the band are pulling you down somehow, and you can use that effect from the band to squeeze your glutes against. So it's kind of like a cable using positive and negative resistance, right? Yeah. Where the cable is pulling, the weight's pulling you down. Yes, yeah. exactly. So it creates like this effect where you can use that to really squeeze at the top. Especially the first repetition of the set, where you perform faster, when you get fatigue, then you are performing, you know, slower. But the first repetition with the band is really, really effective, okay? And the band, if you have the opportunity to use it, without equipment is difficult, maybe in a rack, but uh, you always want to start with the band being fully stretched. You don't want to start a band being loose. That's something that we've seen before. When, when I attached the band, the band was already pre-stretched. That's important because remember the range of motion of the hip thrust is relatively short. If the band is slack, is loose, so half of the movement will be body weight, and then the top half will be loaded, but it's not huge range of motion. So you want to have a fully challenged, fully loaded hip thrust, and then yeah, same execution. Yeah, when you use band, you want to make sure that is they are set evenly, otherwise. Yeah, I think you've got some. And the first time that you try this variation, you might have to set yourself, but then it's probably very